since Taesan returned to Korea, her heart was no longer under her control. As usual, the pub under the company was always crowded by the guys who were stressed by the boss. There was a foreign exchange employee who was complaining a lot. He said that all the long-term foreign accounts had been paid off. They were all paid in Canadian dollars and Japanese yen. More than 3,000 billion were paid in just a few short days. They didn't think there would be such a huge amount of money. With that money, it must be an organized investor, not like a solo player who jumped in and ate everything. With a return rate of up to 900%, no one could guess this if they reported it. This time, there was another rich guy, damn it, who came from the sky to invest in stocks. Behind him, the stock company employees were scolded by their boss. There was a boss who kept scolding his employees for talking nonsense about the company outside. If they leaked the customer information, the company would be doomed. He yelled at them, why did they bring this up here? What if someone dug up the company's customer information, who would be responsible? Now that the information about the stock market was being diverted out, he would hang all the employees in front of the company door as an example. But he didn't know that he was the loudest one in the crowd. Taesan told his lawyer to investigate something in the morning. The lawyer thought he was going to investigate some gangsters in his neighborhood to beat them up. No, Taesan wanted him to investigate his mother's family. The lawyer didn't believe that he wanted to investigate his own mother. Taesan said that if it wasn't like that, why did he want to investigate his maternal relatives? He told him to investigate his mother's family thoroughly, and not to care about the messy things. But what about Taesan's family outside? The lawyer asked, was there a deadline for this? He said the sooner the better. The lawyer said he had never done this before, but he did it for Taesan. He asked him to provide his mother's name and ID number so that he could investigate easily. The next day, at Entrio Airport, Taesan came to pick up Clay from Hong Kong. She was dressed casually like a student from abroad, and she was more comfortable than any other girl, making everyone who passed by look at her. She ran out and hugged him tightly. Clay was beautiful and Taesan was handsome, and everyone thought they were models and very well matched. Taesan asked her if it was hard to fly such a long distance, and she said she couldn't sleep at all last night. She was looking forward to coming to Korea to see him. Taesan didn't hesitate to welcome her. Clay saw that Taesan was not only handsome but also grew a lot taller, and now he was about 1.87 m tall, probably thanks to Casanova's transmission of the essence of heaven and earth into him. Driving a convertible car in Korea with a beautiful girl next to him was awesome. He was tense looking at Clay's waist. He was already tired of smelling her perfume. Saya, at the company, had nothing to do. This time, Taesan disappeared and didn't come to work. How could there be a CEO of a company who left it empty like Taesan? Saya looked to the side and now the lobby was full of gifts from the financial companies that wanted to please him. But Saya didn't care, as long as Taesan didn't date anyone, she was fine. But she was trying to get closer to Taesan. She planned to invite Taesan to attend a seminar with her, so they would spend more time together. But now Taesan was on his way to the beach with Clay. He had to take advantage of this time to enjoy the last summer vacation. It was not bad to have a beautiful person next to him. The rest stop was also crowded with people. Clay got off and praised the rest stop. She told Taesan to hurry up, she was hungry. There were so many dishes for her to choose from. She pointed at this and that, and she ordered everything in the rest stop. There was another girl who also stopped here to eat. Taesan was introducing the dish he just ordered and Clay asked her if she wanted to try it. He said she had to blow it before eating it. Then Clay ordered some more Korean dishes, and her taste was more Korean than his. Taesan went in and ordered his own portion. But he noticed next to him, Taesan saw J.E. Jean also appear. She didn't expect to be here, Korea was too small. Taesan couldn't believe that he met her here. In his eyes, 
there was only Jay Jin's image. After almost a year of not seeing her, she asked him how he was. Taesan said he was fine, and he was okay. She didn't expect him to be more handsome than before. Taesan didn't understand why she talked to him. Wasn't it on graduation day, she went with another guy, and ignored him, breaking his little heart? The staff interrupted Taesan's conversation, and gave him the food he ordered. He was no longer a lovesick boy. Taesan said goodbye to J.E. Jean and left. But she tried to hold him back. Behind him, Clay asked him what took him so long. Who was the person he was talking to? Clay asked Taesan. Who was the girl in front of him? Clay wanted him to introduce J.E. Jean to her. Taesan introduced J.E. Jean as his senior from the school next door, and they knew each other before. J.E. Jean didn't believe that he only considered her as a senior and not as his secret crush. Clay also introduced herself as his girlfriend to help him get away. J.E. Jean didn't think that he had a girlfriend so soon. Clay also complimented J.E. Jean as very beautiful and wanted to be friends with her. J.E. Jean was embarrassed and said that they would talk later if possible. But Clay urged Taesan to go home quickly, as if they lived together. If J.E. Jean was a gentle girl, with the beauty of a schoolgirl, then J.E. Jean saw Clay as a mature and seductive woman. Taesan said goodbye to J.E. Jean and took Clay to his house. She had to wait until next time to see him. For some reason, J.E. Jean felt jealous of Clay, who was Taesan's girlfriend. Clay was very excited to see Taesan's traditional house. The traditional Korean house always gave a warm feeling making any foreigner enjoy it. Taysen's mother welcomed her very happily. Clay even complimented Taysen's mother, saying she was younger and more beautiful than she had imagined. Taysen's mother liked Clay's personality. She also asked warmly if Clay was tired from a long flight. But besides the beauty of his house, Clay noticed something else. She noticed the hand-painted pictures hanging in his house. Clay was curious to know who painted them. The paintings contained a lot of emotions from the author, making anyone admire them. She wondered who could paint such a masterpiece. Taesan said the paintings were painted by his mother. Clay was surprised that his mother was not only beautiful but also talented. Taesan's mother was embarrassed by Clay's compliment, so she also said that she had graduated from the art major. Clay ran over and said that she also had a dream of becoming a painter. Taysen's mother was really amazing. Did his mother think he and Clay were dating? Then she asked how they met. She said she and Clay were just friends. They met when Taysen was traveling in Hong Kong. He understood that Clay was trying to help him hide his secret of being a CEO, so he also acted along with her. His mother doubted his honesty, so she just stared at him. Taesan hugged his mother's shoulder, telling her to trust him. He would not do anything bad to hurt the girl's life. Taesan's siblings came in and said they had a guest. Dad. They didn't expect their brother to come home unexpectedly. Taesan greeted his father and asked why they came with him. The kids said they were on vacation, so they came back to play with their father. They also locked the apartment carefully, so he didn't have to worry. But the kids were curious. Who was the beautiful sister he brought home? Clay stood up, bowed 90 degrees, and said loudly, Hello, Dad. Taesan didn't know when she learned the Korean way of greeting his father. She even bowed politely. Taesan's father didn't think his son's friend would call him Dad like that. Did he become a grandfather soon? Clay introduced herself as Taesan's friend who came to Korea to play. She hoped the whole family would take care of her. That night, Taysen's father called in to talk. This was a conversation between the men in the house. His father said that this was the era of globalization, and nationality was no longer important. Taysen didn't understand his father's intention. His father accepted him and Clay to get married. Taysen dropped his jaw because he didn't expect his father to talk about this issue. He didn't know why this issue also increased his merit points. 
Taysan didn't understand what his parents were thinking. Clearly, they were just friends. But he told him not to babble anymore, and quickly packed his luggage. Taysan couldn't imagine the problem. His parents said the whole family would go to the beach. He quickly went in and invited Clay. Taysan didn't think that his parents would take Clay along. He said he would ask her, and she would surely agree to show off. The next morning, the whole Taysan family got up early to prepare for the beach trip. Taysan's parents and his siblings went in one car, and he and Clay went in another. The kids wanted to go with Clay, but his mother stopped them, saying they had to leave some space for the two of them. His car sped on the highway. Clay came along this trip also as a convenience for him to discuss something with her. Taysan asked Clay how she felt about his family, very warm and cozy, right? Clay turned to look at him driving, and praised his family for being really good. She felt that his father was very quiet, but reacted very cutely. His mother was not only skillful, but also very gentle. The twins kept following her, calling her sister. Taysan got to the point he wanted to talk about, and asked Clay if she knew anyone who had experience in stock trading and was trustworthy. Hearing about the experience, Clay asked Taysan if he was looking for some more employees. Taysan didn't deny it, he wanted a person who studied economics at the University of Chicago like Clay to introduce him to some veterans in the financial sector. Because the U.S. economy was in crisis, the old-timers would surely retire early. Of course, he would pay Clay a large amount of money for being the broker. Then Taysan wanted the person working for him to have good investment and management skills. Besides, they also had to trust him completely, and accompany him. If possible, Taysan hoped that it would be someone with seniority, who had many connections with the younger generation, so that he could easily grasp the politics of the U.S. Hearing Taysan describe the person he wanted to recruit, Clay thought he must be managing a large and powerful financial department. She asked him how much salary he would offer to such an employee. Taysan told her not to worry, he would provide the best benefits in the financial sector for his employees. Clay quickly volunteered herself, saying that if she worked, there would be no place with more credibility. Taysan told her that there was no romance in the workplace, he wanted to find a talented person to work as a way to hide his identity, so that all the investigations would no longer focus on him. The sky was blue, the clouds were white, and the waves were rolling. This trip was the peak of fun for his family. Taysan and his father stood on the balcony, with a direct view of the sea. He joked, his father's liver was also big, daring to take the whole family on vacation during the peak season without booking a room. What if there was no hotel to accept them, then they would have to sleep on the street. But his father wanted the whole family to have a trip, it had been ten years since they had a vacation. His father also praised him for booking the room quickly, and keeping it. Luckily, he was quick to rent a luxury resort for the whole family, thanks to Seiya's secretary, otherwise Taysan wouldn't know what to do. His siblings and Clay changed their clothes and ran to the beach. Clay's beauty made everyone admire her body. She had long legs, a slim waist, and curves that anyone would love. The twins kept running after Clay, complimenting her, Sister, you have a perfect figure. She also praised the kids for being very cute. These two kids didn't wait for their older brother to come down, but jumped into the sea right away. Only she stayed on the shore, waiting for him. There were some spoiled brats, with no job or skill, sitting in ogling girls. The one lying on the edge asked Yong Seo, Did you prepare anything for the freshmen that they brought along? Yong Seo held a telescope, watching Clay playing far away. He thought that those freshman girls were nothing compared to her. Clay officially entered Yong Seo's sight when they went out to play. These sons of rich and powerful families sat on the rooftop of a luxury resort, chatting about Yong Seo's love life. Yong Seo's friend asked, How are you and your junior? Aren't you in a passionate relationship? This guy's name was Daishik, Yong Seo's best friend. He was also the heir of the largest media conglomerate in Korea. 
Young Seo understood what his friend meant. He was referring to Jae Jean. The guy next to him looked at Young Seo's eyes and knew he broke up with Jae Jean again. Looking at Young Seo's face, like he had gotten rid of a debt, but he said that he was heartbroken after breaking up with Jae Jean, so he had to go out with these guys to distract himself. And Young Seo also helped Jae Jin's father get promoted, so what else could he ask from her? Daeshik asked, Is Jae Jin's father the chief judge of the Supreme Court? Young Seo said, That's right. He criticized Jae Jin's father for being rigid, and said that he would soon be kicked out. Daeshik felt sorry, because there were not many people as beautiful as Jae Jin. Young Seo, however, didn't care, and said, do you like her? I'll give her to you. But Daeshik didn't want, he was fickle and bored. This guy changes girlfriends like clothes, so he doesn't want to date anyone anymore. Young Seo is the same, he is afraid that his girlfriends will think that he likes them if he treats them well, and that they will want to marry him. He said that J.E. Jean was only 20 years old and already had such a fantasy of entering his house, so she was not worth anything. The other guy, Choi Ji Hoon, had an even worse idea, to play and run, and not to care about the feelings of the girls. This guy was also the son of a congressman, and the nephew of the opposition presidential candidate. Young Seo said, My father wants to meet Uncle Ji Hoon, so he asked me to pass the message to him, to spare some time, some time to meet. But he said, Since my uncle became a presidential candidate, he has been very busy. Young Seo felt that it was hard to meet him, so it would be difficult to deliver his father's message. Daeshik said that his family would support Ji Hoon's uncle. He thanked him, saying that it was great to have the support of the largest media company in Korea. Daeshik thanked his friends for supporting his uncle. He said that if his uncle won the election, he would definitely treat them to a meal. Young Seo gave the telescope to his friends to see the target that he had spotted today. Daeshik looked out to see if there was any good prey, suitable for his taste. They watched Clay and the Taesan twins, and he even said that the two kids were his type. Then what was he planning to do, to seduce those young girls who had just grown up? Yong Seo asked, who will go out to work today? Daeshik told Yong Song to go to work today, he had just played with some girls yesterday. Yong Seo didn't refuse, he got up and left. He also boasted, in a blink of an eye, they will follow me. The girls didn't know that they were in his sight, and they still played happily. The girls were so excited to go to the beach, they played and forgot everything. When they got tired, the twins suggested going ashore to rest a bit. They lay on the sand, in the shade, but they were still not over their exhaustion. Tayson's sister told Clay, there are some guys who keep staring at us. I noticed them since yesterday, and they don't look good at all. Clay turned around to see what these guys looked like. Tayson's sister was afraid, and told her not to look at them. But Clay said, just ignore them, if you go to the beach, you will be stared at anyway. But she didn't expect that this group would have the guts to come and talk to her like that. He approached, and asked, are you three alone here? Can we join you and play together? It just so happened that their group also had three people. The twins didn't understand what joining meant. Young Seo thought he was so handsome that if he made a move, the girls would surely agree. But life was not as he dreamed, he was rejected. Clay said she just wanted to play by herself, and had no intention of joining anything. Young Seo thought Clay's group was mistaking him for a bad guy, so he said, Don't misunderstand, I... Young Seo said, I just want to make friends. Then he took the opportunity to flex that he was staying at the luxury resort over there. So if they wanted to ride a sports car, have a drink with him, he was always ready. Clay wished him to have fun by himself. And told Young Seo to pay attention and stay away. He thought she was lying, so he stayed, wanting to make friends no matter what. Now Young Seo used a more powerful trick, he bragged that his father was the chairman of Anna Group. Tayson's sister turned back and scorned, asking, so what? 
the other kids stood up, and said bluntly that they just wanted to be quiet, so whoever he was, the son of some chairman, please go away. Young Seo didn't expect that he would be kicked out like that. He was furious. There was no place as backward as this place. Suddenly he laughed, thinking of using his smile to fix this situation. The twins and Clay couldn't believe that there was such a shameless guy, who was kicked out but still stood there smiling. Young Seo said, I can't believe someone dares to talk to me like that. Is this a joke? Taysen's sister was not afraid, and said, I don't know how a guy came out of the ground to bother us. He was annoying, and turned out to be crazy too. Being called crazy, Young Seo couldn't take it anymore. He swung his hand, intending to slap Taysen's sister hard on the face, but someone held Young Seo's hand. He turned around, wanting to see who dared to stop him from hitting someone. It was Taysan. Young Seo asked, What do you want? Taysan said, I want to clean up the trash. The twins were happy, because their brother appeared. Clay saw once again, the scene of Taysan being a hero and saving the beauty. He apologized for startling everyone, he forgot that there were a lot of flies and bugs on the beach today. He should have followed them to deal with it sooner. Young Seo tried to pull his hand out, but couldn't. He shouted, Will you let go? Looking at Taysan holding him lightly, but he couldn't pull out, not even a little bit. Young Seo asked, Do you know who he is? He won't let you go. Taysan said he knew very well that it was different. He said, What do you know about him? Tell me. Taysan revealed Young Seo's identity, he was the spoiled son of Ana Group. Young Seo didn't expect him to know him, but still dared to attack him. His friends saw Young Seo was in trouble, so they ran to help. They asked Taysan, Who are you? Let go of our friend, now. Taysan didn't think these bastards would hang out together like that. In his previous life, Taysan had seen this guy in the newspaper. He was involved in a scandal of using stimulants, and high-ranking officials had covered it up. When it was exposed, the public was outraged. They protested, demanding that he be brought to trial. But then, the media reported, twisting the truth, and helping him. But Taysan still remembered, their names were Ban Daishik and Choi Ji Hoon. They saw him not letting go, so they started to curse. Seeing them play together, Taysan understood. They were all in the same boat. They didn't understand how he knew. Young Seo knew him, but still dared to talk back. So they guessed, he had a not so ordinary status. Young Seo, who was in pain, still managed to say, I don't know Taysan. Taysan threw him away, saying, They don't need to know who you are. They just need to know that you are the trash that I specialize in cleaning up. Seeing young Seo rolling on the sand, Daishik and Ji Hoon couldn't believe it. Taysan threw him away like that, and ran quickly to his friend. Clay couldn't believe Taysan was strong enough to throw a person like a trash bag. The twins didn't think their brother was normal, they only saw him sitting in front of the computer typing constantly. Now he was so cool. Young Seo fell there, and didn't forget to scream, Do you know who my father is? He said Taysan dared to touch him, he touched the wrong person. He couldn't fight back, so Young Seo used his mouth, saying he would make Taysan kneel and beg him. His voice made everyone on the beach notice them. People who were swimming, saw the drama, and started to pay attention to this side. More and more people came, to watch if there was a fight. They surrounded Taysan, and started to discuss the current situation. Taysan was about to use the trick that he used to deal with the thugs in school. He deliberately said loudly, Young Seo, I don't care who you are. Taysan said, Even if you are the son of Ana Group, if you harass my sisters, I will never let you go. That's when everyone knew, the troublemaker was the son of Ana Group. The people who came to watch, started to dig up Young Seo's information. They said, he claims to be a law student, but he spends his days teasing girls, like this. The information of the people was fast. Taysan just said a few words, 
and they started to dig up all the information of Yong Seo. Yong Seo's friends didn't want Taesan to bully their friend, so they started to speak up. Ji Hoon thought Taesan was from the opposition side, so he asked, Which candidate are you from? Taesan was no stranger to Choi Ji Hoon. This guy appeared on the political pages all the time. He saw him even more despicable than Yong Seo. Ji Hoon said, We are candidates for the presidency. He evaded taxes and broke the law with impunity, but no one could do anything to him. Taesan asked Choi Ji Hoon, Aren't you afraid that your uncle will be sad if he knows what you are doing? Ji Hoon didn't understand how Taesan knew him. Taesan added insult to injury by saying, Your brother is still a young man, so why are you guys trying to get the kids to drink alcohol? The crowd became more and more interested in the story, and they pointed their fingers at the group. Young Seo said, What are they thinking, inviting us like this? Then they started to take out their phones and take pictures of the faces of these spoiled brats to post them online. The people also took the opportunity to curse these rich kids. They said, they look innocent, but why are they so wicked to seduce the good people? Now these guys only have to dig a hole and hide in it to avoid shame. And they also want to post their faces online. What are they, the sons of tycoons or the grandsons of presidents? Just post them all and let everyone see their true colors. This way, Taesan didn't have to lift a finger and still dealt with this bunch. Daishik warned Taesan that he was crossing the line. He didn't care who he was, but he shouldn't mess with them. He told him to be careful, he remembered his face, and he would make him afraid to leave his house. Taesan also knew that this guy was Daishik, the grandson of the biggest media mogul in Korea. Luckily, there were many people around, or he would have torn his dirty mouth apart. Taesan also said Daishik's name. He was a bit startled. Daishik didn't think that he was hiding so well that Taesan also knew. He also mentioned Daishik's grandfather, the chairman of the DISUC board, right? He didn't think of that either. Daishik felt that if Taesan knew that much, he must have investigated them before. He said that as a media family, Daishik shouldn't harass the miners. So the trio were all captured by the crowd. They were ready to sacrifice these three guys on the internet for the keyboard warriors to join the conversation. Young Seo was furious and cursed the people who were taking pictures of them, and even threatened to punch them in the face if they didn't leave. He also jumped in and swung his arms to hit the spectators while calling them beggars. He didn't forget to say that he wouldn't let Taesan go either. Taesan hated the way Young Seo called everyone beggars. He was a law student, but he spoke nonsense and didn't respect anyone. He didn't know when the school's standards had fallen so low that they let such an immoral guy study there. Someone said they would complain about this to the chairman of the Anna Group. Clay said there was no need to be afraid of these spoiled kids. Young Seo didn't expect that there was a girl who dared to complain to his old man. Clay said she was a part-time student secretary at the Hong Kong headquarters. She would ask the legal team to send a complaint about the violence and sexual harassment today. Hearing about the part-time student bank, Young Seo couldn't say anything. Then Ji Hoon was also scared. Daishik saw that if this continued, it would be bad. Daishik told the other two to back off. He said that if they touched the part-time students, it would be worse. They might even cause trouble for Young Seo's father's company. The guys couldn't do anything, but they were angry. But in front of the public, they could only swallow their anger. Daishik told Taesan, they are backing off for now. Taesan didn't think they wanted to say anything else. He was angry and said, don't think it's over when they leave. Daishik will make you regret playing with fire. But Taesan didn't want to let them go yet. You still don't look happy. He called the three guys back and said they had to apologize before they could leave. The three guys were boiling with rage, and they told Yong Song to calm down. You are just provoking them, Taesan said. There is this thing, I don't know if I should tell Yong Seo or not. He said, in just one more year, the Anna group will collapse. 
I heard they are dragging your company down with them. Young Seal was also angry. Taesan said, he will end up being a beggar anyway. Young Seal was called a beggar, and he became even more furious. His friends held him back and told him not to be angry because of Taesan's words. He had to restrain himself for the sake of the image of the guys who lived off the money of the people. Just wait. Taesan would trample them under his feet, so they wouldn't act so arrogantly anymore. Lawyer Du couldn't believe that Taesan wanted to set up a private fund. He asked Taesan, do you know what kind of fund that is? Of course Taesan knew. This fund is one of the collective investment strategies, with undisclosed partners on the market trading floors. He had mastered this knowledge when he worked at the securities company. He wanted to invest in this fund to make it easier to take over and merge companies. Hearing about the takeover, Lawyer Du asked, Which company do you want to take over? The company to be taken over had already caught Taysen's attention. He told Lawyer Du that he didn't necessarily have this intention, but in his heart he wanted to declare war on the Anna group. Taysen corrected Lawyer Du's words, instead of using the word takeover, he was planning to manage the companies that were on the verge of decay. He would use the illicit assets of those companies to contribute to society. Lawyer Du was surprised that a high school student could have such a thought. Then Taysan said, isn't it great to have a lot of money and also do good deeds? Lawyer Du still wanted to emphasize to Taysan, a private investment fund was no joke. You don't understand why Lawyer Du is so serious this time. Lawyer Du said, a private fund usually faces a lot of obstacles. Not only foreign currency but also domestic currency, all forms are very complicated. Moreover, a private fund is often involved in litigation for reasons of improper use of the fund. If the public criticizes or is dissatisfied with the fund, we also have to find politicians to ask for help. Usually politicians will step in to investigate and control the tax and disbursement issues of private funds. But if it succeeds, it will be a trap for the Anna group to fall into. Taysan still said he only invested a little. Lawyer Du asked how much money Taysan said was small. Taysan took out 100 billion to invest. That amount of money made Lawyer Du speechless. He thought that was not small at all. It's better to buy some subsidiaries to invest in, rather than having to open a private investment fund, right? Taysan said, why are you so surprised? He even dared to bring his sports car from abroad by plane, so what was this fund? He told him to rest assured and do the legal paperwork. About the fund, you will pay me my salary, and you will pay off the contract term as well. Lawyer Du gave up, and he had to do as you wanted. Taysan also didn't forget to ask about the progress of the investigation into his mother's family that he asked him to do. Lawyer Du said he had finished it. But, Lawyer Du asked him, do you really not know anything about your maternal family? Taysan said, yes, he didn't know anything about that family. Lawyer Du said, you are the descendant of a noble lineage. What, how could Taysan be a noble lineage? He asked. Have you ever heard of the Dongyun group? He asked, is it the group that has the largest or second largest chains of securities, construction and trading companies in Korea? But what do those people have to do with Taysan? Lawyer Du confirmed, the main lineage of your maternal family is the lineage that is directly running the Dongyun group. Taysan didn't expect his mother to come from the Dongyun lineage. The lawyer also informed him that his grandfather had died 25 years ago, so the current chairman was his uncle. Taysan couldn't believe what he had just heard, but he gradually remembered the things in his previous life. The Dong John Securities Company had been linked to the company he worked for after graduating. In his previous life, that company didn't accept an employee from another province, but they accepted Taysan to work. Then they rumored that he had to have an umbrella to be able to work there. Even his friends didn't expect him to be accepted. So, that was the reason Taysan was accepted, even though he wasn't good at any field. Lawyer Du also gave him a file of documents. He said, 
All the information about your mother is in here. Lawyer Du said his mother had suffered a lot. Taysan thanked him for helping him find out information about his mother. He said he was not a guest, he still paid Taysan to work. The lawyer asked Taysan to let him go first. Taysan's investment funds would give him a headache in the next few days. Taysan still couldn't believe it, his mother was the daughter of one of the largest or second largest groups in Korea, but she became a farmer with a pile of debt. She should have received the inheritance money after his grandfather died. Looking at his mother's family, they also had the same surname as the current chairman, but they didn't look alike at all. This document contained a lot of information that could be the stain of the Dong John family. So, if careless, it would be caught right away. Taysan silently flipped through the information about his mother. He didn't expect that these things could happen in real life. He learned that his grandfather was too greedy. He had three wives. Luckily, his grandmother was still the main one. His mother was the youngest daughter in a family with many siblings. This information was beyond his imagination. The children of the other wives hated his grandmother and mother, even though she was the official wife of his grandfather, they still blamed her for ruining the family's happiness. His mother was very talented in painting. Even though she lived in a family that was always scheming, her soul always aimed for the best things. Her unhappy life ended when she met his father. At that time, his grandfather was dying in bed and could no longer protect her and his mother. His uncle, who became the head of the family, strongly opposed the marriage between his mother and father because he had arranged a political marriage for his mother. His mother refused and accepted to give up everything to live with his father. Then his grandfather died. Before he died, he wanted to see his mother for the last time, but his son did not allow it. When his mother heard that he had passed away, it was too late. His grandmother was kicked out of the house right after his funeral. She did not care about material things, so she had no power in the house. While his mother was struggling with her pregnancy, she died of a mysterious cause. When his mother found out that his grandmother was kicked out of the house right after his death, she was very angry but could not do anything. Just like that, in a short time, his mother lost both of her loved ones. Then there was news that his will was forged, and the brothers in the clan kept fighting. His mother was so disgusted with this family that she refused to inherit the property. The more he read, the more tears Taysan shed. Suddenly, he felt sorry for his mother. He immediately called her. On the phone, his mother asked, What's wrong, son? Taysan choked, unable to say anything. Hearing him sob, his mother asked, Are you okay, son? Is school stressful? Let me come and visit you, okay? He said, I love you very much, mom, more than anything in the world. Hearing her son say this, his mother had a bad feeling, and asked him if he had caused any trouble, or if he had dated many other girls besides Clay. Hearing his mother nagging because she cared about him, Taysan promised to investigate all the pain that his mother had to bear. He would make them pay dearly for what they had done. In Hong Kong, a man holding a cigarette, he was deep in thought. Jia was a foreigner admiring the beauty of Hong Kong at night at a bar. In New York, Clay's professor was sitting and drinking with his old friend. Seeing Robert's face was not good, the professor asked him if he had anything bothering him. Robert was sad, confiding to his friend, his professor, that he was tired of Wall Street, where there was only blood and tears, and he had to compete all the time, making him just want to be a normal manager, away from the ephemeral money. The professor asked if anything had happened to Robert. He had been fired. The professor was surprised that someone as talented as him was easily discarded by the place where he had fought with his bones and blood. Robert said that he had warned them about the economic crisis, but they ignored him. Then when the economic crisis happened, they blamed everything on Robert, and kicked him out. The professor could not accept that they dared to do that to someone as talented as Robert. The professor advised Robert to cheer up. He still had capital, 
he could still start over. But that money, Robert had spent it all for his mother-in-law to treat her cancer and Alzheimer's. He lost it, now he had no money at all. Now, on the brink of despair, his mother-in-law died. And then his wife, she cheated on him with her own boss. Oh, the unfortunate man, he was betrayed by the wife he trusted so much. She gave him a very long horn. Robert cried and said, Now I'm just a poor and miserable man, I have nothing in my hands. However, he did not regret spending money on his mother-in-law's medical treatment. What about his children? The professor asked. Robert, because he was unemployed, lost custody of his children to his wife. This was also a punishment for him, because he always cared only about his work and not his family. The professor told Robert not to lose hope, and asked him if he wanted to start over. Robert said, Now I'm old, who would hire me anymore? Now I'm just an unemployed man, with no money, no family. The professor felt very sorry for his friend. He did not know what to do to help him, but then he remembered Clay's offer. The professor wanted to introduce Robert to that company. Robert did not think the professor had a job to introduce him to. Thanks to that introduction, Robert came to Hong Kong. This job was through the professor's invitation. As soon as he heard someone could hire him, Robert agreed right away. He would sell his soul for a chance to start over. He would be loyal to that person until death. Now he felt that maybe he was too desperate to make that decision. There was someone looking for him outside. Clay opened the door and asked if he was Robert Lyon, the manager. He said yes. Clay introduced himself as the professor's student. Matt hired Taysan, who was coldly evaluating Robert. When flying to Hong Kong, Taysan regretted not being able to get a U.S. visa. He had to meet Robert in Hong Kong to easily access and develop the U.S. market. He had to work hard and trust the people he worked with. Taysan wanted the best in the business world to become his hands and feet, so he had to know them well. But then, a ray of light appeared next to him again. Then Taysan was summoned by the fairies. Someone asked him if he wanted to see him. On the peach tree hung the words the best astrologer in the world. This time it was a man with white hair and beard, he sat under the peach tree to meditate. Taysan wondered who the man sitting under the tree was. He introduced himself as Nam Sago, he was a scholar who was proficient in astrology and divination. However, Taysan did not know him. It was the first time he heard this name. Seeing that he did not know, he did not care. He used to be very famous, but now he is forgotten. Taysan apologized for his limited historical knowledge, and then he asked him why he called him here. He asked him if he needed the ability to read other people. This ability would help him analyze the personality of the people he met. Taysan understood, so he was a face reader. He also said he had made prophecies warning about the important battles that changed Korea. Taysan did not understand, but he knew he would teach him face reading. He said he did not have enough merit to learn. Taysan asked him if he could lend him some, he would pay him back later. Suddenly a man dressed in black appeared, he asked. What is he doing? He startled both the old man and Taysan. He said, what the old man was doing was against their agreement. Taysan did not understand what agreement they had. He said the old man was cheating, he seemed to dislike it very much. Taysan thought these two must be scholars, so they dressed like that, but he did not understand why they kept arguing about something. He knew there was a problem, but they could not argue while Taysan was still in a hurry. He had to, but then, Taysan also had to stop this argument. He asked, who was the newcomer? He did not think there was anyone who did not know him. He introduced himself as Park Sapong, a very famous face reader at the end of the feudal era. He asked him, did he know the painter who painted King Gojong's portrait? Without introducing any more, he said, he was a face reader. He was so talented that he gouged out his own eyes after reading himself, because that way he could become an official. Then Taysan had never seen anyone play so recklessly. 
he had not finished introducing himself when the old man who was meditating pointed at him, saying he was not a good face reader at all, he could not predict how he would die. The old man stroked his beard, saying, only he was a true prophet. But he also did not let go when he criticized the old man for being picky. Neither side would give in to the other, so Taysan had to intervene, telling them to shut up. He asked, did they need his merit points or not? Of course, they needed them, what fairy would refuse merit points? Now he would ask them a question, whoever answered correctly would get the merit points. They told him to ask right away. Taysan wanted them to look at his face, and then tell him what they saw. If they were face readers, they would have to see Taysan's future. He asked them, why couldn't they see anything? They both just muttered, not saying anything. He looked at Taysan's face, saying he could not see his past or future. He asked, was he also a fairy? But clearly Taysan was still a human. The old man explained, usually through the face, they would see their past and future, but Taysan's face did not show anything. They both said his face was too short. This was not the answer Taysan wanted to hear, so he did not give them any merit points. But they all said they answered everything they saw, so he should not be stingy. Taysan said, if they wanted points, they had to teach him more things, teach him feng shui and divination. At this point they did not think he would ask for more requests. Back to the present, Taysan was meeting Robert Clay telling Robert that he would interview him for the job himself. Taysan looked at Robert's face, and he said he saw Robert was a person who was lost in his unfinished dream. Robert did not think Taysan was so young but already a chairman, and he did not understand what he said. Clay did not understand why he spoke like a fortune teller when he was interviewing an employee. Taysan said he saw Robert was facing the most difficult stage of his life. His family was shattered and he was buried in debt. All his relationships turned their backs on him. Robert didn't understand, how did Taysan know? Taysan said, I didn't investigate behind your back. Everything I saw was based on the Eastern method of physiognomy. Hearing him say that, Robert understood right away, this was the art of face reading. He was quick and smart, a Wall Street talent. He said it, and he understood it. Taysan felt that Robert's fate was very similar to his, losing everything in the last days of his life. Clay got up to make coffee, to give Taysan and Robert some private space to talk. He didn't forget to thank Clay, she said, if you are here, I will show my talent of making coffee to treat you. Clay said, Taysan, just continue, okay. But he closed the deal right away, Clay didn't understand what he closed. He hired Robert to work for him, without beating around the bush. Taysan asked Robert if he had any questions, he would answer them. But he hadn't introduced himself, how could he hire him already? Taysan even made Robert the director of his company. From now on, he would have to rely on Robert for everything. He asked Robert if he was satisfied, he was more than happy. He had just lost his job and became a director, there was nothing more to say. Robert said he would do his best for the company and the chairman, he would use all his experience to contribute. Hiring him also helped Taysan's karma increase. Taysan took Robert around to see the office of the company in Hong Kong. He also told Robert, the company's investment method is very special. Because the current investment of the Hong Kong company cannot be put into operation right away, Robert might look like his asset manager here. Taysan wanted Robert to keep the secret about the work, whether the investment fund was illegal or the company was involved in money laundering or drug trafficking. He said the company was new but was watched by many forces, so first he wanted Robert to set up companies and venture capital funds online. The initial estimated capital was $3 billion. Robert asked how many investors there were, Taysan replied, none at all. So Robert thought he would have to raise funds. But for Taysan, that was redundant, his money, three billion was not a problem at all. Robert couldn't believe that he had raised such a huge amount of capital by himself. 
Taysan wanted Robert to find human resources, set up a system for the company to be established. Robert had to do it right away. Taysan said, that's right, just hire experts and complete the goal as soon as possible. He gave Robert full authority, everything was up to him. Robert didn't understand why Taysan trusted him so much. He said, I trust Robert, because I want to show him that life is better than what he sees. Robert was touched, he wanted to cry. He didn't think he had fallen into a dead end but still had someone treat him well. Robert's face reading said he was very talented. In just a few short days, he showed his full potential. He quickly recruited talented employees that he had noticed before. Taysan had been to Lai Mei and Hong Kong a few times, and Robert always reported in detail all the work of the Hong Kong office, so secret that Clay didn't know. After only 15 days, the office was operating in a neat way. Nothing was difficult in the hands of the experts. The investment funds in London, the Netherlands and Hong Kong were quickly established. Because he was ready, Taysan prepared to launch his investment fund on the market. On his last days in Hong Kong, he brought a bouquet of flowers to Reput Le Bay, the richest area in Hong Kong. It looked fancy, not a joke. There were only luxury villas here. So it turned out, Clay was also a rich man, not a joke. Clay came to the gate to welcome Taysan to his house. He praised her house for being beautiful. She modestly said this was not her house, this was her parents' house. But he said it would be hers in the future. She was the only daughter of her parents, she must be spoiled. Taysan also wondered about Clay's father. He wondered what he was like. Living here, he must have a lot of reputation. She led him into the huge yard. He did not think there was so much land in the city. Clay called her parents out of the house. Her mother was a French woman. She was very happy to meet Taysan. He bowed and thanked her for inviting him to her house. Taysan also used French to compliment her mother for being so beautiful that even roses had to bow. Clay's father did not seem to like him very much. Her mother praised him for being talented when he could also speak French. Then he introduced himself to Clay's father. He introduced himself and then wanted to shake hands with him. As soon as he invited him, Clay's father used his strength. Taysan could feel that Clay's father practiced martial arts. Moreover, he was also transmitting his internal energy. He tried his best to welcome the kid who dared to take his dream line away. He could shake hands with him, Taysan was also good. Taysan said he was also not bad. Her mother asked why they greeted each other for so long. Clay teased Taysan for buying her father the Mao Dai wine that he liked. He looked at the luxurious packaging and knew it was expensive. Her father praised him for having good taste. Her mother took the bouquet and praised it for being beautiful and wondered how many flowers there were. Taysan said there were 47 flowers. Her mother asked how he knew her age. Taysan did not know, because there were only that many flowers in the shop. Her mother liked him for knowing how to talk. She told him not to mind their messy house. But look at Clay's house, there were servants and security staff everywhere. The equipment in the house was the best. A mansion like this must be very rich. But she said Taysan's house was a media company with a long history, so her house was still far behind. He also took the opportunity to say that the house was where we lived. It did not matter if it was small, as long as it was comfortable. He did not think he was still complaining that Clay's house was too small. But her father liked boys like this. He called Taysan by his name and told him to drink a glass with him. He was also not polite at all. A glass of wine was the beginning of the conversation. They drank to know each other's hearts. Clay's father told the maid to prepare a whole feast. He told him he was lucky to come here and drink with him. Clay's father poured him a glass. Before, he raised his glass and wished him more success in his career. Taysan also wished him back, hoping that his father-in-law would have everything as he wished. 
he asked him if he was a VIP customer of the Hong Kong bank. He said he just borrowed some money from the bank. Taysan said as long as he had collateral, the bank would lend him. His father-in-law thought he was also a smart businessman. But as a professional, his father-in-law did not think it was that simple. He thought he must have some backing behind him. He asked him directly if he was an investor or a secret owner of a Korean conglomerate. He only had a small private fund. His father-in-law did not believe he owned such a complex thing. He asked how old he was. Taysan smiled and said that age did not matter when making money. He agreed, as long as he had the will, anyone could make money. His father-in-law asked him what he invested in. Stocks, securities, or credit companies. Taysan looked at his father-in-law's face and saw that he was a typical businessman. He looked very savvy. But Taysan did not reveal his business secrets. He said he did not have to be afraid, just treat him as his father and tell him. He was very curious. Taysan asked if he wanted to invest. He allowed him to present and see how much money he could pour for him. The little boy he had just picked up from outside, let's see. Taysan said if he invested, he would earn 1%. His father-in-law doubted his life. Why only 1%? But the minimum investment to join was $1 billion. His father-in-law realized that this was not a joke anymore. $1 billion was not something he could have if he wanted. He wondered if he was the only one investing. Taysan said his staff were still looking for investors. His father-in-law heard that he had staff and seemed to stop scrutinizing him. He turned back to the Hong Kong company. A guest was invited by Robert to the company. He came to visit Robert after he had overcome the crisis of his life. Robert said Jack looked more like a politician than a scholar. Jack thought Robert was in trouble, but how come he was in such a splendid office now? Fortunately, Robert was running a private fund and recovered. He said the operating costs were not high, but the investors were very smart. Jack asked who they were. Robert asked if he wanted to meet the person who Robert praised, making Jack curious but not interested. Next year was the presidential election. Jack joked that whoever paid for him to become president, he would dig down the hell to meet them. Robert offered to help Jack. He thought it was true and thanked his friend profusely. But nothing was free. He confessed that he supported Obama, the U.S. federal senator. He asked for $100 million for the Democratic Party member Obama. That was Taysen's request. But Jack did not understand clearly. Hewler had an advantage over a win. The business trip to Hong Kong or Texas was like Taysen had been reborn for a year. There has been a lot of drama in the past year. You caused so many problems in such a short time. Life at school was always peaceful and happy. Then last summer, you also went here and there, so it was quite interesting. But you still couldn't persuade Clay's father to be an investor. The last semester of high school is about to end. Now you are preparing for the university entrance exam. But Taysen's best friends don't know why Hui SEO has been absent lately. A classmate said that he was having a hard time these days. They didn't know what happened to him. D. Suck asked if his family had any problems. But Du Dung promised Huen Seo not to tell. They told D. Suck to tell them quickly. They were brothers, so why hide anything? Do Jin said Huen Seo was an orphan. Did you guys know that? Tae San didn't know that his friend had such a difficult family situation. Du Wyung said that the orphanage was in trouble. The guys didn't know this. The orphanage was in the area of the project land that was about to be dissolved to build an apartment. So everyone there had to move out. Because this time it involved a member of parliament, the market didn't want to intervene. Dojin said that's why Huen Seo had to run around to find a job and make money. The guy said how could Hyun Selfie and the social welfare department do that? Taysan didn't think that his friend who always smiled happily had such a situation. 
he remembered that if he got involved with a member of parliament, it must have been related to the candidates for the presidency recently. Such a powerful and mysterious thing, only young SEO could get involved. Taysan called his parents to join him in volunteering. His mother said he was very diligent. Then Taysan took the opportunity to say that he was just following his mother's example. His mother noticed that Taysan was a bit clingy to her lately. Taysan, did you know? Only Hui Seo's orphanage, the surrounding areas would be cleared for the authorities to build and repair. The authorities announced that they would build public works. But in fact, they built private apartments. Looking at it, Taysan also knew that it was a bunch of corrupt people working for the rotten capitalists. At night, at the bus stop near the orphanage, Hui Seo got off the bus. Today he had to go to the city to find a job all day. Hui Seo worked so hard that his stomach hurt. He worked hard all day and only got 60,000. He skipped school for a few days and only earned a few 10,000 dong. It was hard for him to earn money. Hui San wanted to donate to the orphanage. But this money was not enough to pay for the meals for the kids in the orphanage. He was close to the orphanage. From the outside, he could see that the orphanage was very shabby. Outside the gate, Hui San heard the kids grilling meat in the yard. 